Morning, Trainiacs. It is the last day of my rest week before the final three week section before Half Ironman Puerto Rico. So I'm just chilling out here for a couple hours on the bike and I thought, what better opportunity to have another edition of everyone's favorite thoughts, thoughts from, from the, bike. the bike. And today we are going to go over the 10 most common mistakes that new beginner triathletes make when it comes to their bike training. So the first three issues are fairly related and they're all about getting the right training intensity mix. The first most common mistake that new triathletes make when it comes to their bike training is not going hard enough. Now, there should be at least one session every single week that is like eyes popping out of your head intensity. Like, I don't think that I can hold this for 30 seconds, two minutes, five minutes, eight minutes. And these workouts can be really, really short. These are like your hit workouts, your high intensity workouts that you do during the weekday because they tend to be shorter. We don't have much time during the week. So we have a short, really intense workout. And what this does is it actually builds your muscles, your arms and legs endurance ability as opposed to your heart and lungs endurance ability. It makes your peripherals, legs, arms strong allows our legs and arms to process the oxygen that we give it with another type of training. That's the next issue. The next most common mistake is that new triathletes don't go easy enough enough of the time. Somewhere around about 80% of your total training over the course of an entire training year should be at fairly low intensities. This is what builds up your heart and lungs, your central fitness. It's what allows your cardiovascular system to be nice and fit. Also, big benefit to this is that it sheds a fair bit of fat while you're doing it. It keeps you injury free and it builds your base of fitness that allows you to accept that really intense stuff and that race stuff later in the year. All good. You go easier, you get faster. The third thing that beginner triathletes make a mistake on is also related to intensity and it's typically left to our own devices. Triathletes will go and spend too much time in what I call low ROI training. This is a zone three training. This is the gray zone training. This is like, race pace training, but triathletes spend way too much time in this training zone. Should be used sparingly around race season, unfortunately, because it's a nice, comfortably hard pace. When left to our own devices, a lot of endurance athletes will spend as much as 50% of our time in this zone when it should be more like five to 10. The reason that this is a mistake is that because the intensity is hard enough to do damage, but not hard enough to make us faster, training in this zone over and over and over digs us into a hole without actually making us progress at all. So use zone three race pace training sparingly close to races to sharpen up. The next most common mistake that beginner triathletes make with bike training is not going long enough. Quite often, what beginner triathletes will do is, let's say they're training for an Olympic. They'll go for a 25K bike, a 35K bike, maybe build up to a 40K bike thinking, hey, I can bike 40 kilometers, I can do an Olympic distance race. Well, when you combine the 40 kilometers in the race with race effort and having to run after it and swim before it, the endurance required is significantly higher than that 40K. Also, when you're riding a bike, it's a great opportunity to build huge amounts of endurance because it's low impact and we can do it for a long period of time. So that long, long bike of instead of 
40K, we're talking 60, 70, will help you with your overall endurance to do the entire race, not just be extremely strong on the bike and get off fresh on the run. Next most common mistake, and this is all the way from beginner triathletes to even some pros, is not spending a big enough focus on comfort on the bike. About 80 to 85% of the total drag that we have to push through the air actually comes from our body. So if we can be really comfortable on the bike and not necessarily be the most aerodynamic, but be the most comfortable and stay in an aerodynamic position for the entire bike ride, not shift around, not look up, not move around on the seat, but instead stay nice and steady and have an even application of power, that is going to be the most aerodynamic that you can be. Get free speed. I've heard of people having as much as a 16 minute gain in time savings over the course of an Ironman with no change in fitness and just changing their bike position. Related to that aerodynamics bike fit issue is that beginner triathletes will often get a super long tail aerodynamic helmet thinking, ah, oh, that's gonna be the most free speed that I can get with that helmet. Well, fact of the matter is that even a lot of pros will still look to the side, look down, look around, and as you're doing that, that tail is flipping around, actually creating drag, and that aero helmet with the long tail is actually doing you more harm than it is good in total. So there are a lot of pros that are realizing that they haven't put in the work to keep a steady head for hours and hours and hours on end, and they are actually going to an aero short tail helmet. Now, next most common mistake might be odd to hear as I'm sitting on the super bike of all super bikes, the Ventum, but it's that new triathletes focus on spending too much money on a bike and worry about having to spend $10,000 plus on a bike. You can get a entry level, say like a Ventum Z tri bike, slap on a $1,000 set of aero wheels, clean up a little bit of the cables, make sure the cables are zip tied nice and close, get some race tires on those wheels and mount the bottles and your nutrition in aerodynamic positions and boom, you have about 95% of the bike that you need to go as fast as possible. Beyond that, spending thousands and thousands and th tens of thousands of dollars, it's kind of just more of a luxury without giving you as much benefit as those first, say, four or $5,000 to set up a really, really good bike. Now the next most common issue is not having a properly fitted race suit. Cam Worf talked about this in the How to Bike with Cam Worf Masterclass that I've spent the last couple days editing. Ooh, you're falling. He said that if he had $1,000 to spend and only $1,000 to spend on improving his performance by buying speed, he would probably spend about six or 700 of it on a really well-fitted aerodynamic suit. Oh, again. And he actually talked about some of the studies that have shown that even just having something over top of your skin is more aerodynamic than skin itself, which is why you see athletes like Lucy Charles wearing socks that come all the way up to her knees to get that skin area gone. And getting rid of all the folds and extra material that flaps around is going to make a huge benefit to your overall aerodynamics. Remember, 80 to 85% of our drag is our body. So the more aerodynamic we can make that body, the more aerodynamic we're gonna be overall. The next most common issue that beginner triathletes don't address when it comes to bike training is poor nutrition. Long race specific rides are the time to start dialing in your nutrition for the race. Whereas 
Beginner triathletes often think of race nutrition as a complete afterthought and three weeks before the race here, oh, uh, yeah, okay, what should I do? Mmm, now I've got to start thinking about nutrition. I'll go to the bike shop and get a whole bunch of stuff or fill their bottles with Gatorade because that's going to give them a superpower. But what happens is their stomach isn't yet trained to accept any of that. So while it might even be the right race nutrition, it's the wrong race nutrition for that gut at that point in time. I actually did an entire video series about this and there's a free supplement that you can get by going to triathlonterran.com forward slash triathlon nutrition guide that walks you through how to figure out your entire race nutrition plan, which you just then try doing in training, particularly on a bike. And then the final mistake that beginner triathletes make with bike training is really common, and that's not following up enough bikes with a brick run afterwards. A lot of beginner triathletes think, well, if I can swim the distance, if I can bike the distance, if I can run the distance, I'm totally fine. Or they might even be doing longer than the distance and they think, oh, I'm totally fine. Well, that reroute of blood flow going from the bike to the run is a huge toll on your body. And you gotta train your body to reroute that blood flow really quickly or it's gonna feel like somebody put cement into your legs in transition too. So at very least, you've got to do somewhere around six workouts before your first race, going from the bike to the run as quickly as possible. So you go Trainiacs, those are 10 of the biggest mistakes that you can make as a beginner triathlete. But one of the big things to know about all this is everyone makes mistakes in their first race. Everyone makes mistakes in their 10th year of racing. We are all constantly learning and that's one of the coolest things about triathlon is that it keeps you always progressing, learning, trying new things. So don't feel like you've gotta get this right in your first season, your second season, your 10th race. It's all a learning process and that's part of the fun of triathlon. No matter what, make sure that you enjoy it and make sure that you're subscribed so that you learn along with us. All right, and later, Trainiacs.